Hey, this is Bill for Sparky Channel, and this is a pancake box. And a lot of guys like to use the pancake boxes to install ceiling fans and so forth. And the advantage of them is you uh, use lag screws and you screw it right to a stud or to a ceiling joist. And then you just finish your drywall right up to it. And uh, the disadvantage is that it's very small. This one's a six cubic inch box. It, it's written right on the boxes is six cubic inches so we can't exceed the six cubic inches with our conductors and our connectors and so forth so what i have here is a 14 2 with ground cable romex cable coming into the box and that gives us two conductors right here we have a black hot conductor and a white neutral conductor okay so that's got to be accounted for in the box we have an equipment grounding conductor right here that's the green wire it uh, bonds the metal box to the grounding system of the house so we got the ground wire from the cable hooked to that and then we're going to be hooking up a fixture to this and this is also an equipment grounding conductor and it would just go right in here you see i i used a three connector wiggle lever nut so you just put it in there like that so this is an equipment grounding conductor and this is an equipment grounding conductor for the fixture see that's an, actually an important point that these are separate equipment grounding conductors when we get to the code you, you kind of need to know that these are both equipment grounding conductors this one's for the fixture though all right so the question is have we exceeded the capacity this is six cubic inches and i'm going to go over how you figure out the capacity for two 14 gauge conductors and an, and an equipment grounding conductor. Another point is that this area right here on the fixture is usually called the canopy and you can't make connections in this because it's not listed, it's not labeled for electrical connections. So all the electrical connections actually have to be made in this box. So that's the question. Does this six cubic inch box leave enough room for these wires and connectors and for the wires from the light. Here we are at 2020 NEC code 314.16B box fill calculations. That's what we're doing. We're going to figure out the box fill calculations for that little pancake box to see if we're correct or not. So the volumes in paragraphs 314.16B1, which is right here, through B5 as applicable shall be added together. No allowance shall be required for small fittings such as lock nuts and bushings. So we have a little clamp in the box and that's not going to count. Also, the wire connectors will not count. We'll go here, uh, 31416B1, and we're going to go down to this exception right here. An equipment grounding conductor or conductors or not over four fixture wires, smaller than 14 AWG or both, shall be permitted to be omitted from the calculations where they enter a box from a domed luminaire or similar canopy and terminate within that box. So we have an equipment grounding conductor from the luminaire, from the light, that little 20 AWG wire, a stranded wire, that we shall be permitted to omit from the calculations. Okay, so that little ground wire doesn't count. And then we have the two conductors coming from the fixture, the white and the black. So it says, or conductors are not over four fixture wires smaller than 14 AWG. So the white and the black are 18 AWG or both shall be permitted to be omitted from the calculations. So we can also omit the white and black wires coming from the fixture. So we've pointed out what doesn't count in the box fill calculations. Let's start in on what does count. This is table 314.16B volume allowance required per conductor. Now our cable coming in is 14 gauge. That is two cubic inches per conductor. We have a white wire and a black wire. 
both 14 gauge. So that means that those two wires take up four cubic inches in our box allowance. And that brings us to the last item, which is Article 314.16B5, Equipment Grounding Conductor Fill. Where up to four equipment grounding conductors or equipment bonding jumpers enter a box, a single volume allowance in accordance with Table 314.16B shall be made based on the largest equipment grounding conductor or equipment bonding jumper entering the box. And then this is new for 2020. A quarter inch volume allowance shall be made for each additional equipment grounding conductor or equipment bonding jumper that enters the box based on the largest equipment grounding conductor or equipment bonding conductor. So we got a single volume allowance. So our grounding wire coming into the box is 14 gauge. And let's assume that our ECG wire going to the box is also 14 gauge. So our largest grounding wire would be 14 gauge and that would give us two cubic inches. So we have two 14 gauge conductors for four cubic inches and we have one ground wire and one ECG wire going to the metal box and that is two cubic inches for the total of six cubic inches and the total capacity of the pancake box is six cubic inches so we just barely made it if you said yes there's enough room for this configuration of wires you're correct 6.0 for our box fill calculation and 6.0 cubic inches for the capacity of the box I'll put a link in my video description for the Hubble Reiko pancake box, which is acceptable for ceiling fans. And I'll put a link in my video description for the Hubble Reiko ceiling fan electrical box, which is acceptable for the fans, but it's an exterior box. I'll also put links for various kinds of 2020 NEC approved ceiling fan boxes. And I'll put links for both the 2020 NEC Spiral Bound Codebook and for the 2020 NEC Handbook. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.